It happens to me like every year. I don't really know why I'm surprised to be We're almost at the end of August, which means school starts next week or the week after. Um, and that is very, very soon. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how year 12 is very, very, very different to year 11 and the things you can prepare for it now. So there are five main ways that year 12 sixth form college is going to be different to year 11 GCSEs and this is irrespective of any pandemics that will take place, have taken place or are currently taking place. Number one, and I'm going to go through and explain all of these quickly and then in lots more detail. Number one, you're going to get lots of free sessions to do with whatever you like. Number two, you're going to have folders for your notes and you're going to be responsible for organising them. Number three, you're going to be expected to do a lot more work outside of your subjects in top of, in top of, on top of what the teacher does as well. Number four, Four, there is going to be a lot more pressure on you to do other things. You're probably going to be expected to help in the lower school or do an EPQ and something like that because we are starting to think about UCAS and what happens next already. And number five is that you really need to start revising now. Now, that was very, very quick. It is obviously a lot more detailed and in depth and involved. Uh, so I'm going to go over all of those in a little bit more detail for you now. So first of all, you are gonna get freeze. Now this is very, very, very exciting because you're gonna go into the sixth form column room or the college common room where they probably have a kettle and biscuits and you can spend all of your freeze sitting around eating biscuits, which is fine, absolutely your choice. However, I am going to suggest that after the excitement of sitting around and eating biscuits while you're at school has worn off a little bit, you do start to use these frees usefully. Now there are several ways you can use these frees usefully, not just sitting in the quiet room and doing your work. Your teachers will occasionally have frees as well. So ask your teachers uh, when they're frees are and if they are in the same time as one of your frees and you know that your maths teacher is free at this time at the same time you have a free then go and ask your teacher for help at that time what lots of teachers will do is just sit in their labs in their classrooms and mark during that time and they are more than happy for students to come and work with them to come and ask them questions so that they are there if you have um, a question or, um, or something that needs to be solved and can be solved really quickly, if you can ask a teacher. Now, the big thing, the thing that people may or may not realise is that you're not going to be given exercise books. You're going to have folders and you're going to be responsible for these folders. So, the best way to organise this is to have some home folders here. So, I've got psychology uh, chemistry and like, maths and chemistry are labelled up. Some home folders where you have all of your neat written up notes and then a folder that you take in school. So this folder you take in school you probably only want it to be like a slimline folder because this is the one that's going to be the one that's going to be in and out of your bag every single day. You're going to want to have a pad of paper in here and this is what you're going to be making your rough notes on. I strongly suggest you get a load of different colour biros and start coming up with a key or labeling things in different ways so you can have keyword and then underline it and then when you get home take your rough notes from your school folder and write them up neatly so write them up neatly do the homework go and find extra examples if for example math questions or extra quotes to back up stuff you've been told in class and then write them up and put them in your nice folders what we are aiming for with this is to make a um, revision guide for you at home so that you don't have to necessarily go and buy a revision guide because you're making your own one as we go along so watch my videos and make extra notes from those add to the stuff your teachers have told you if you get given textbooks in school make notes from that as well and then keep them in your folders nice and neat now there are going to be folder checks which means you're going to have to hand in your nice neat home folders 
to your teacher so that they can check that you are keeping up on top of work periodically. But instead of handing in your exercise book to get marked, you'll probably just hand in your homework, which is on a bit of paper to get marks, and then you'll get it back. And then the really, really important thing is, is that you file it in your folders, because otherwise you're going to end up with a massive wadge of paper that's been sitting in the bottom of your bag for weeks half a term and it's going to be a mess and you'll have put an apple in there and then that will have got a bit yucky or you'll have put a bottle of water in there and that will have leaked and then you've ruined a load of notes so keep up on top of all of your notes this is one of the easiest the simpler things you can do to reduce your stress levels if you're keeping on top of stuff you're less stressed and to make sure that when we start revising for things you have everything that you need now number three i kind of covered there already that you have to do more work so for every hour of contact time with your teachers you are expected to do an hour's independent study now, you can use some of your freeze for this. That is a very, very sensible thing. Otherwise, you're going to be doing it at home at the weekend. And if your friends don't have freeze at the same time as you and you're just sitting in the common room eating biscuits with people that you don't really get on with, just use that time more productively to study and then you can hang out with your friends outside of school. So in this extra hour, it is things like doing your homework, which shouldn't take up the whole time because you do need to do more on top of this. Looking up definitions for things, working out your keywords, finding more examples, and then you do need to spend a bit of time right from the very beginning, going back at what you did last week and checking that you know it all, getting a checklist of everything that you've done and going through and making sure that you're keeping on top of things. There are lots and lots of things that you can be doing in this time, but at the beginning, it may seem like you don't need to, but if you get into the habit of doing this, it will be so much easier for you, I promise. Now we are starting to think about UCAS application forms and what happens next already. We don't need to think about stuff like personal statements, but we need stuff to write on there. So you're probably gonna be approached about being an ambassador for this subject or doing an EPQ or going to help in year seven maths or something like that in your freeze. All of this looks brilliant when we are writing UCAS application forms and it's a really nice and helpful thing for you to do. And then we do need to start revising already now i know this is literally brutal because you guys didn't have a great experience of school during the pandemic but it, i am expecting exams to come back so we need to start preparing for that so when i say revising i mean things like making your flashcards getting yourself a little set of flashcards like these these ones i particularly like because they've got little tabs in so you can have separate set of flashcards for separate folders and then you can label these up with stickers or however you want to but making flashcards right from the beginning is a really really easy way to start preparing now for revision Re flashcards of keywords is really really important um whereas at GCSE you could kind of get away with like I don't want to be rude but like sloppy or lazy definitions of words that is not going to work at a level there are very strict definitions for things and if you don't get them right even if you just miss out one word from that definition or misspell one key important word then you might not get those marks so those this is a, a quick introduction to how things are different in year 12. Um, it is going to be a bit of a shock for some people, but guys, don't worry, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way.